pray quickly. Father, Lord, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We honor you because indeed the entrance of your word gives light and it gives understanding to our simple hearts. Jehovah, Lord, we ask, O oh God, that as we go into the study tonight, you open our hearts, O oh God, to be receptive. Father, we pray, O oh God, that as we study this word, O oh God, it would land, O oh God, onto fertile grounds in, of our hearts. Father, Lord, the seeds that will be sown tonight, O oh God, will germinate on great, great soil, great grounds in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I pray, O oh God, that tonight you will go beyond my preparation. You will go beyond my understanding, O oh God, and speak the word that you only would have your people here tonight. I yield myself to you, O oh God, and I ask that you take control. Receive all the glory, Father, for in Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. Amen. So, the topic is adoption. What is adoption? I didn't even have a look at the definition, but adoption, as we know, is quite a popular um, word. You know, you can define it anyhow you like it. Adoption is you taking on, you know, when a couple takes on a child that is not theirs biologically, for example. And when you take on a child, the expectation is that you give to that child full rights that you would give your own biological children. Yeah, that is the expectation. Um, and we're going to be looking at it in the context of our Heavenly Father. Yeah. Um, the memory verse that I would like us to look at quickly is Ephesians 1 verse 5. And I'll be looking at a few um, translations before we then delve into the, 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 the study. So the NIV, NIV, NIV version says, He predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. The ESV version says, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will. I want us to pay attention to the repetitions there. The purpose of his will, predestination. KJV says, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Again, another word that has jumped out there is pleasure. So we looked at predestination. We look at adoption. There's a reference to unto himself. And then there's a reference to the pleasure, his good pleasure. NLT version, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family. By bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he expected, or should I say, this is what he wanted to do, and he gave him great pleasure. I like the NLC version. It talks about God deciding, God deciding in advance, his decision, an up upfront decision, to bring us into his own family. Again, it says this, even though God has made this decision, it is through Jesus Christ. Yeah, this is the NLC version. It says this is what he wanted to do, and he gave him great pleasure. Just studying this um, text has been, you know, um, phenomenal for me, for the want of a better word to, to put it. In the text, we learn that because of God's love, yeah, because of God's love, God, God's special grace, he, predestined, he predetermined, he predestined that we are not you know, lost. We are not damned forever. So those who are not Jews, those of us who are not Jews, were adopted as sons through Jesus Christ. Only through Jesus Christ, church. So hearing and believing the message of Christ helps us to become members of God's family. Okay? And though we're not Jews, we are believers and we are disciples. And we are, we, because we are believers and we're disciples, we have been adopted as sons through Jesus Christ. So there's some, there's some specifics that we will be honing on tonight. There's a reference to sonship. There's a reference to predestination. There is a reference to God's pleasure. There is a reference to his plan. So it is not a coincidence. Galatians 4 verse 5, NKJV, tells us that when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive adoptions 
as sons. That we might receive adoption as sons. Romans tells us that we have not received the spirit of bondage, again, to fear. But we have received the spirit of adoption wherein we cry, Abba, Father. Is someone following me this minute? That the spirit of adoption gives us the right to call God Father. It says we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Why did God choose believers? Why did he choose these believers to be his children? Again, we go back to the references that we saw earlier. That it was according to his divine purpose. According to the purpose of his will. Because of his love. Because of his love that we cannot even begin to try and understand. Unfathomable love. Hallelujah. His divine plan. God made a way. Church, God made a way from the time that man sinned, right? Destruction came, domination came, we were lost. But God in his infinite mercy, he made a way. He orchestrated it that all men would come to his own family. The memory verse for us to, to remember if we don't even take away anything, but we will take away something. Amen. Ephesians 1 verse 5 is something that we must meditate on. It says, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Christ to himself. And there's a reason I'm reading this over and over again because we get to a point where we start to look at the difference between you know, babes in Christ and sonship, yeah? When a man is born again, he begins a new life in Jesus Christ, okay? When he is justified, the memory of his past is wiped away, hallelujah. And he gets accreditation of righteousness, okay? So righteousness comes by justification, in James 5, verse 1 to 3, it says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace through God, our Lord, through, through, through God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have redemption by faith. Yeah, by whom also we have redemption by faith, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of glory. And then he goes on to say that not only so, but the glory in tribulations. Also knowing that tribulation worketh patience. So the verse that I wanted to really hone on there is the um, verses 1 to 2, which says, Being justified by faith, we have, peace with, we, have, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have redemption by faith. Amen. So in the new birth, what happens? The believer becomes a child of God. Yeah, as a baby in Christ, that's what, that's what happens when we become born again. You're born again, you're a baby in Christ. In adoption, that child receives the position of an adult. Hallelujah. That baby becomes an adult in adoption. So if you look at it, there is not much of a difference between a baby and a slave. And I would explain Imagine a baby who is born to reality. Parents are alive, everything okay. That baby is real, or reality as it were. But guess what? Babies feed on milk. But this child, because that child is a baby, someone can force feed them anything. The baby cannot fight back. The baby does not have authority. Yeah? So when, when we become born again, we're first babes in Christ. And we, then we need to rise. We need to move on to maturity. It's in maturity that we start to exercise our authority. We need to move to the place of sonship where we would say no. Where our no will be our no. Our word will be our bond. Where we, we can exercise our authority by virtue of adulthood. Okay? So the difference between a baby and an adult son, yeah, is what happens when we, when, we, when we realize that we have truly been adopted and we walk in that authority. 
we abide in the vine. We grow unto maturity. Hallelujah. Galatians 4, 6 to 7 says, And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of a son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. And it says, Wherefore, verse 7 now, says, Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Again, imagine a baby being um, an heir of God. How can a baby exercise the authority? If for any reason, you know, even if you look at you know, the relationship with our earthly parents, if anything happens to an earthly parent, and they have to go. How can a baby exercise their, uh, you know, authority in terms of inheritance as a baby? Well, maybe they have people that are representing them, you know, based on what the will says, etc. and etc. But the reality is, the position of sonship, an adult child, you know, and a position of adulthood where we come into sonship by adoption changes dynamics. You know, we enter into a place of authority. We are co heirs with Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So, having laid some, a bit of a ba background to, you know, what happens in the new birth and what it is that we should be aspiring for, the question then is what condition, what is the condition of adoption? What is the condition of adoption? Church, adoption has only one condition, and that is faith. Amen? It is faith. Faith in Christ. Faith in Jesus Christ. That is, of course, if you're already born again and justified. Remember, we looked at justification by faith and redemption earlier. So if you're born again, one, and you're justified, then you have to have faith that you have been adopted. And you have to claim your adoption by faith in Jesus Christ. So in Jesus Christ, you are children of God through faith. Whether we like it or not, as Christians, there's a place of faith in almost everything. In fact, in everything that we do. Amen. And what is the time of adoption? We do not have to wait for a specific time. Adoption can be now. Amen. Adoption can occur the moment one believes in Jesus Christ. Right now is the time. However, adoption will not be complete until the resurrection day when we enter into God's presence. And I would like us to look at a scripture quickly. Romans 8.23. Romans 8.23. Amen. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. Amen. Very often in the world, you know, we are not recognized as sons of God. You know, we're not recognized as sons of God. But on the resurrection morning, those of us who remain in faith will occupy our rightful places. Those of us who remain in faith will occupy our rightful places. Amen. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. So how do I know that I have been adopted? How do I know that I have been ad adopted? You will know that you have been adopted when you begin to be led by the Spirit of God. Those who are led by the Spirit of God, they will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. So when you start to walk in the Spirit, when you start to be led by the Spirit of God, guidance by the Holy Spirit, or should I say guidance and ability to follow the Holy Spirit, do His bidding, do God's will, is a proof that you have been adopted. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. That's what the Scripture says. The Holy Spirit will guide the children of God into all truth. John 16, 13. So church, when you begin to walk in the Spirit and you see manifestations, 
This is signs and wonders following. When you pray and you can see answers to prayers, when you are bold to be able to lay hand on the sick and have faith that they would recover, when you are bold to be able to give even when there's nothing in your pocket, when you are bold to take, to take steps, you know, without actually seeing, you don't, seeing the end, when you are able to trust God that he knows the end from the beginning, then you know that you have been adopted or you know that your faith is strong enough to carry you as an adopted child of God and you can begin to walk in it. Amen. The blessings of adoption. What are the blessings of adoption? In particular, believers are blessed because God chose us. Remember we talked about God predestined the fact that, you know, he would draw us into his own family. God made that decision out of his goodwill, his pleasure to adopt us, to give us a way out, to make a way for us where there was absolutely no way. He gave his only begotten son to make a way for us. How many of us do we even know that this is a way that God orchestrated? That he, he, he planned it out. How many of us know that this is God's own doing and therefore should be marvelous not only in our eyes but in our lives in terms of how we respond to his love? How many of us even ponder over the fact that God actually knows the end from the beginning and is working everything out for our good? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can now confidently call God your father. So that's another benefit. The first one we spoke about is that he chose us. He predestined. That salvation came at a great cost. He gave his only son. The death of Jesus Christ is the first gift that God predestined to make a way for us. As children of God, we can be confident that God will give Everything that he's promised, including the gift of salvation, because he is not a man that he would lie. When everything passes away, not an outer of the word of, of the word of God would pass away. So we can trust that he would fulfill everything that he's promised, promised, including eternity. Eternity is real, church. It is real. Amen. There's so many blessings that we cannot count them all. But just to mention a few, the first one, you can confidently call God Father. How wonderful. How wonderful. Remember, a slave can only call his master Lord. Yeah? This is another interesting revelation. A slave can only refer to his master as Lord. A slave was never allowed to address his master as Abba. But on adoption, you will Call Jesus Christ, my Father and my God. Awesome. Romans 8.15. Romans 8.15 says, The spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Hallelujah. It says, But the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And we cry, Abba, Father. Amen. Another benefit, God loves all his adopted children peculiarly, specially, the same way. He will correct us, amen, as and when necessary, like any earthly father would do. And you can trust that when God corrects you, you are never going to, be the remain, you're never going to remain the same. As long as we are receptive, as long as we are open, as long as we are trusting and we are rested in him. He will correct us as necessary. We have the assurance that one day we would gather. We would gather with the other sons of God in heaven. Again, this is another benefit, that we are heaven bound. Amen. That our sojourn on earth is not in vain. That there is hope. That Christ in us, the hope of glory. Amen. Amen. And when we gather... 
in heaven, it is to receive our father's inheritance. Remember that a baby is not likely to be able to negotiate for their inheritance. A baby is not likely to have much say, even though the inheritance is there. But as, as children of God, as adults, as people who have been adopted into sonship, when we, when we rise with, with Christ, you know, in glory, we would receive our, our Father's inheritance. Amen. First Peter 1, 3 to 4 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that faded not away reserved in heaven for you. We are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Should anything really take us away from the love of Christ? I guess the revelation of what is, you know, what is, what is, what is possible the revelation when God opens our eyes to see and when God reveals more of himself to us, when, when our ears are inclined to his words, then we can begin to, you know, we can begin to, 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 to strengthen our hope. We can begin to strengthen this faith that we have. We can begin to long, you know, for eternity because eternity is real. Amen. So what, am, what are my responsibilities as an adopted child? What are my responsibilities as an adopted child? As a child of God, we must follow his footsteps. We must follow his footsteps. We must follow the one who called us. He's the sheep. We are his shepherd. There's no point wallowing the face of the earth without direction. If the God of the universe is our God, the God of the universe who's got it in abundance, who knows the end from beginning, is our God. So why? What are we waiting for? Why can we not follow in his footsteps? First Peter 2 verse 21 says, To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow his steps. We have a manuscript. We have a template. Why do we want to reinvent the wheel in the face of the earth? We have been adopted unto sonship. We have the right to tap into the heavens, to make petitions to our heavenly father who calls us his own. Hallelujah. He calls us his own. As a member of God's royal family, I must behave in such a way that I don't bring disrepute to his name. In such a way that people don't, you know, because of my behavior, people don't, you know, uh, disdain God. You know, my behavior does not tarnish the image of God. The Bible says that we are a royal priesthood. A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. People who have been called forth to show forth his glory. We have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. How powerful. How wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, because more than ever before, you are opening our hearts, oh God. You are reminding us of who we really are in you so that we can take our stand. Thank you, Jesus, because indeed we are your sons. Thank you, Jesus, for this right that you have bestowed upon us. We don't take it for granted. Since God chose us due to his own merit, due to no merit of ours, we need to show gratitude, church. And how do we show gratitude? Continuous praise. Continuous praise. We need to praise God relentlessly. Amen. It says, 
We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. We've called forth, we've been called forth to show forth his praise. In the book of Psalms, it says we were made to praise him. The book of Psalms tells us that praise is beautiful on us. Praise is comely unto the righteous. God, church, we were made to praise God. So are we fulfilling this calling? Are we fulfilling this calling? It's not too late. The more he reveals himself to us, the more we, we understand that indeed we are sons of God. The more we would be, you know, the more, the more we, would, we, we, would, we would be inclined, or should I say, the more we would remember to draw near to him in the place of praise. And of course, prayers. Amen. Amen. We should obey Jesus. We should obey Jesus Christ, who made it possible to become a child of God. Knowing that I can, de- I can only demonstrate my love for him by loving my fellow men. So in obeying Christ, loving our fellow men is another thing that, needs to, that, that, that we need to really, really pay attention to. So God gave his son. He gave first. His only begotten son. Church, you cannot love without expressing. You cannot love without sacrificing. You cannot love without an act. God demonstrated this example for us by giving Jesus Christ, his only son, on that cross of Calvary. He demonstrated You cannot love without demonstrating. Amen. You cannot love without proving it. Whether as a man or a woman, a father, a mother, in a relationship, in life, to our fellow Christians, the people of the same fold. This is the season of love. More than ever before, we are reminded that this is the season to love, to give back. To walk as true disciples and children of God. You cannot love and not give. You cannot love and not show it. You have to love God in return. We have to love God in return. The Bible also enjoins us that we should love ourselves. Love ourselves. How do you love yourself? In fact, when I was studying this, something that dropped in my spirit was, guess what? Loving yourself means you are not doing the things that are clear that will lead to damnation. That is love of self. Love of self is, the Bible is in manuscript. The Bible tells me the things that I shouldn't be doing that can lead to, my, uh, to damnation, that can lead to the loss of my soul. If I love myself, then I follow what the Bible says and avoid sin. That is love of self. If I love myself, I'm, I, I abide in the vine. Jesus Christ is the vine. I am the branch. We are branches. How do I love myself? Making sure that I stay in the place where I'm trying to please God. In a place where I'm trying to hear in him. In a place where I'm trying to draw closer to him. A closer walk with him. As the year comes to an end. What do we do? We draw closer. We draw closer somehow. We seek to find him. We seek to follow him. Because he's right with us. He's constantly knocking on the door of our hearts. Constantly knocking on the door of our hearts. Constantly nudging. Constantly, you know, trying to draw our attention We need to love this God back. In loving ourselves, we love others. We need to walk in love. Love your neighbors and demonstrate this love by loving the people around you. One key thing that I would like to talk about is having faith that we have been adopted as sons of God and the authority that comes from it. It is so, so key. It is so, so key. Another thing is the fact that we need to stop sinning. 
We need to stop sinning. We need to come into maturity. We need to come into maturity because it is when we come into maturity that we have, we're able to exercise our authority. Amen. As a babe, you can be force fed. As a teenager, the dynamics are di different. But as a mature adult son, the story begins to change. You can rattle the kingdom of darkness because you know you're right. You exercise authority. When you speak, heaven stand. You command the devil and his cohorts. You shake the kingdom of darkness. These are the benefits that come with adoption and actually knowing that we are children of God. We are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. These are the benefits of adoption. We make things happen. We carry, we are bearers of light. When we, when we, when we turn up, darkness cannot comprehend. We're able to bring healing to those who are, who, who are sick. We're able to bring deliverance. We're able to touch lives. When we come into people's presence, they are not drained. We're able to touch life. We're able to walk like representatives of Jesus Christ on earth. We have been created in his image after his likeness. We're able to reproduce as our Heavenly Father has, as, 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 as expects. And how do we reproduce? We reproduce in very many different ways. In your finances, in, you know, be it children, you know, you're able to expand. You can begin to put any definition in that word, reproduction. But first, we have to have faith that we are children of God, that we have come into adoption, into his family. We are sons of God. Hallelujah. We are sons of God. Amen. Today we begin to take our stand. We begin to take a stand. Amen. We begin to take a stand. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We begin to draw parallels in the spiritual we begin to have our ears more inclined to the Holy Spirit. We begin to be, re we are reminded that we are in the world, but not of the world. We are his righteousness, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. His workmanship created unto good works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I begin to uh, bring the word to a close, I think one thing that is worth really doing is pondering over, you know, this whole adoption topic. Pondering over it. In your quiet time, just think about it. What is the difference between me being a born again, coming into, you know, um, receiving salvation? The Bible says that with the heart, man, be man, man, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you confess Christ as the Lord and personal Savior, and you become born again. What then happens? So I'm born again, so what? So you can begin to look at the whole adoption topic as the next steps. I'm born again, so what? I need to move on to maturity. I need to come on to maturity. I need to exercise authority. I need to, you know, Continue the works of Christ on earth. I need to actually take the baton and operate with power and authority. And the Lord will help us as this gets revealed to us even more. He would help us because he's more than able in Jesus' name. So, are we ready tonight for the blessings and responsibilities of adoption? Are we ready tonight for the responsibilities and blessings that come with it. 
Would you like to pray about it now? Shall we bow our heads and pray? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving us so. You demonstrated your love by sacrificing your only beloved son, Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, you gave your very best. Lord, give us the grace to give, our, to give you our best. To love you and to love people in our world. To love others. To love our neighbors as ourselves. Father, Lord, it takes grace. We acknowledge this. And we thank you for this uncommon grace. We ask, oh God, that you'd help us that we will glorify your name in all that we do as your representatives here on earth. That, Lord, on that last day, we will not be found wanting. Help us, O God, for in the mighty and awesome name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.